Good morning all and sundry. This is the Ferex 20 volt uh, electric drill that Aldi were selling um, a while ago. Comes with a nice set of drills and a hook. Um, this unit you don't see in Aldi much these days. They, they're constantly selling the battery pack and the charger. This is the battery pack that goes with it. But they don't seem to be selling the tools so much these days. I don't know whether this was a bit of a failure, this product. Um, a failure in terms of sales, that is. I mean, it seems to be a perfectly good electric drill. I bought two of these, actually, um, because they were on sale for £20 when I bought the first one. And then I saw them at 15 and I thought, well, I can't be uh, had like that. So I thought, right, I'm going to amortise the cost down to £17.50 by buying a second one. Ridiculous, I know. But it does give me an opportunity to look at something which I've never looked at before. And that's how does this thing work? How does this speed controller... Which appears to have a sort of stepped effect. I don't think it's a potentiometer. So how does this thing actually work? Well, I'm going to find out. Even if it means sacrificing this drill... Gonna find out how this throttle works. Now I've just noticed um, four screws here holding probably the gearbox and uh, torque, you know, clutch slippy thing, whatever it's called. Let's see if we can get that off. Oh, <laughs> are those not Phillips? No, they're not. No, they're Torx T10s. Well, I've got a Torx T10 uh, wrench or key type thing here. That'll take a while to get that off, so I won't uh, put you through that. I was um, looking on YouTube to try and find a video on how this thing works, and I couldn't find one. There were a couple of people who'd taken electric drills apart, but nobody had actually gone into any detail about how this throttle control works. I can't believe that um, there are no YouTube videos on how the speed controller on an electric drill works. Maybe there aren't. If you can find one, let me know. Put a comment uh, down below. Right, does this thing come off? Uh, not easily. Is there another screw? Actually, there may be. That might be a holding screw, and so might that. Let's take those out. Now, the other place I've bought power tools is Lidl, and they have their Parkside uh, series. Why won't that come out? Oh, that is a Phillips. I don't think that one's going to fit. And I've not seen so many of the Parkside 20 volt ones recently. They seem to have favoured their 12 volt series. There's three different types of screws so far. That one's Torx, but it's slightly longer. Um, although I see that they've got a new 20 volt one coming out soon. That ain't coming off. Right, I thought that would come away nicely and then this would be uh, easier to work with because it would be lighter, but... No, it seems I'm going to have to go around this whole thing, removing all of these tamper-proof Torx. Actually, they're not tamper-proof, they're just Torx T10 screws. Right, having loosened all of these screws, not the ones right at the bottom, I've split the case enough for this to come out. Or have I? Is the motor coming out with it? Oh yes, it is. Right, I'll have to undo the whole thing. I think it's now going to come apart. It is. There's the uh, battery connector. What's in there? Oh, screws. Otherwise, a dob of grease. Okay. So, what do we have here? This is the bit I'm interested in. I want to know how it works. I'm going to take it apart. If that means sacrificing this drill, well, so be it. I've got two of them. Well, there is one screw on this module, so I'll take that out. And it may be that there's something under this plate that we can have a look at. Now, I mean, what are the options here? Potentiometer. But these things tend to have a step to feel. They, they kind of work in a series of discrete steps. So is it a switch? Is it a, a, a little wiper on a multiple um, fingered PCB switch type thing? Or is it some sort of uh, optical encoder? That seems a bit over the top for a 15 pound drill. I guess we'll find out. Oh, ah, that's a heatsink for a MOSFET. Well, on here we can see that this is a five to 15 amp, 
24 volt DC uh, Jinyuan controller. It has M1 and M2 motor outputs and it has battery plus and battery minus inputs there. There's also a small red wire that goes down to a point on this board marked uh, L plus and I'm pretty certain it's for the light so the trigger must have a switch so as soon as you push it in a small amount the light comes on and then it starts to do the pulse width modulated speed control of the motor this one also has a built-in uh, reversing and off switch it's a three position switch so that's all integrated into this unit oh the uh, off switch is just a mechanical stop the off position but the other two positions must electrically reverse the connections inside that's quite clever now I've seen that there are some clips where did I see the clips oh yes uh, here there's a clip so I'm gonna have to try and now force this module apart well I've decided this will be a lot easier if I remove the motor uh, from it I'll probably leave the little PCB for the battery connector on oh that's not doing anything let's take the temperature up to 400 uh, yeah I'll take these two wires off and then uh, I can sort of turn this thing over much more easily well I think they've done that thing where they bend the wires through the little hole in the tag back on itself so you can't unsolder it so they're gonna have to be cut off because it just wasn't playing ball I've marked a plus next to the positive one and uh, if this goes back together again I'll solder those wires back on well I've undone most of the clips and the covers coming off and the MOSFET sensibly is uh, disappearing into its little hole but is there one more clip that I can't see oh maybe it's on the top there on the top of that little part where this uh, switch goes down inside I'll persevere oh heck uh, numerous bits of metal have sort of sprung out of here and there's a little spring there and I think that's all from the changeover switch assembly <laughs> that's going to be complicated to put back together oh there are two springs in there oh that's going to be really difficult to work out how that thing works but yeah that's a changeover switch it's all greased as well oh, come on lots of little bits there yeah that'll be interesting putting that back together but what it looks like the way this works is it looks like there's a sprung wiper here and as you push the switch that slides down the back of this pcb and i'm expecting to see a whole series of tracks on here or traces um, so that yes this is indeed a stepped speed control there's a little chip there we'll find out what that is in a minute I think I've worked out how the reversing switch works now. These two contacts sit in here, but of course each of them has a spring behind it so that these contacts are sprung out that way and then they wipe across all this metalwork here and that rotational action down inside there does the reversing thing. That's well, at least I know how to put that back together, but with those springs, that's going to be difficult. But now I'm having trouble lifting this PCB out. Um, it comes out a little way. I can lift it there. And this positive connection is sliding out with it. But the negative connection on the back, I'm just wondering whether that was pushed through the hole and then bent over and soldered. It doesn't seem to be trying to come out with this board, so I'll keep trying to work it out. But it's tricky I think there's some sort of piece of metal soldered to the drain of this MOSFET which is preventing me lifting the board out so I'm just going to unsolder this joint here to MOSFET drain <laughs> it's not hot enough there's obviously a large slab of metal under there so let's get that hot enough and try and disconnect this so I think that's what's preventing this coming out. 
Right, it seems to be this metal contact here, which is part of the reversing switch, is running right around here to the drain. And there's also a little bit there to anchor it in place. So I think it's lifting out. Oh, springs everywhere. Um, it's all bending and it seems that this connection up here might be one to take off. But again, it's lots of metal, so it's going to be very difficult to unsolder. It's a large metal bracket. But if I could get that off, I think I could separate the board from the metalwork under it. And I've just worked the trigger free and noticed that it's got a wiper, a double wiper here, but also <laughs> another wiper here and an extremely fierce spring in there. <laughs> I very much doubt this is all going to go back together again. Uh, and I've now noticed that there's a big diode soldered between this metal contact and this metal contact. So they're both going to have to come out together. Oh, and on the back of here, we've got more springs and springy bits of metal that's horrible where did that bit of metal go oh it's on my arm there it is oh goodness me yeah i think this might be sacrificed already and there's the circuit board so this big diode uh, i think says six a there's a six there and an a there there's also a four i'm not sure what that means I don't think it means 46 amps. Um, there are two contacts here and a slide arrangement and they clearly mate with these two contacts. But why? Because this just goes in and does speed control. Um, there are five, I think, intermediate, very tiny tracks in there, but a trace to the bottom and a trace to the top and then a big long sliding trace to this side so there's lots of switching going on here lots of uh, pcb track switching and switching on these large metal conductors what's it all doing it's only meant to be speed control is that how they get the fine um gradations more than just those five tracks in the middle there would offer <laughs> i don't know so here we are, top of diode um, or cathode goes to battery positive. So this is the um, anti back EMF diode because uh, it's pointing sort of up towards the positive. That's also involved in the um, changeover switch for the direction control. Five, I think, intermediate tiny little tracks in there. Two end points on there, a long slider. Uh, this side but there are sliders down here with a broken track there there's a contact point there which goes into the PCB another contact point there but that's the um, anode of the diode that, and then there's a slider up here and this thing has large contacts on here which look like they're high power and also the tiny little signal contacts here <laughs> why so many why so many connections that's crazy right this little eight pin chip looks like it's an o 69b o 69b uh 2018 40 looks like the date 2020 yes uh when did i buy this i'm not sure about that now uh, but anyway, the top number is 069B. I'll just take a quick look at that, but I very much doubt I'll find anything. Well, typing SMD 069B, SOIC 8 and various combinations of those, lots of different things come up, but nothing specifically uh, related to pulse width modulation speed control. We do seem to have a whole bunch of resistors of different values here um, heading into this chip. And it's going to have an output which pulse width modulates the um, the MOSFET here. There's a diode up there. There isn't much else. Capacitor, 
don't think there are any components on this side. No. So it's just um, a whole series of inputs from this slide switch with these multiple positions here. But I just have no idea what these large contacts are doing. Um, unless maybe that's where it goes to full power and rather than have the MOSFET involved in full power, um, it somehow isolates that and, and makes a direct connection for full power so that the MOSFET doesn't get hot. I suppose if you hold it at the position just below full power, then yeah, the MOSFET's going to warm up. But that's essentially how it works. <laughs> now, can I get it back together again? I do get the feeling that this mechanism here was probably preloaded into this frame, this metal frame, and then this point here is soldered into there. And then I think the trigger, this trigger sits inside this module and then it's simply a case of sliding this back into the plastic work in here. I'll give it a go. No, the only way this is going to work is I'm going to have to unsolder that, the drain of the MOSFET. There's also a piece of metal, one of these two, that one I think, which is soldered into the hole under the source of the MOSFET. That's the gate over there. <laughs> so those are both going to have to come off. And then all this metal work is going to have to be pushed into the various positions in here and then the slide put in and then this board lowered down and soldered so yes I'm gonna to have to unsolder these two now okay the PCB is off this metal work so I'll just straighten that up a bit because I think the diode got a bit bent and that should now push down inside the plastic housing uh, but there is one more contact I need to take off which is that one which is soldered to there, the MOSFET source. So that's going to have to come off and be pushed down inside here. And I have to suck the hole so that the PCB can slide down over the contact. That's not going to be easy. Right, all the large scale metalwork is pushed back into this housing. And um, these contacts here, helpfully with their springs, have a sort of latching foot so that you push it in and it latches in place so those two just sit there while you lower this in and I've got to compress the spring get all this inside here it, it should um, this molding should slide up inside here so it should all hold together and then lower the PCB down on top I'll try and get this in first but I can't film it well, maybe I can. Uh, yeah, that needs to be lined up. Okay, so I've got to compress the spring. Oy, oy, oy. Ah, maybe, actually, if I take that off. Uh, if it'll come off. Yeah, so I've managed to pull that out of there um, without hopefully doing too much damage to these fine contacts. Uh, one of these levers is still on. I can put the other one back in. Oh, the spring fits in there and it latches in place like that. Now that should, with its large spring, I should be able to get that into the housing and have it sit flat and then I'll push the trigger on. I've got that in but it doesn't want to stay in so I'm going to get this on now. Slide it on there and hopefully click it into place. Oh, that doesn't want to stay in there. No, it's not keen to stay in there, so I'm gonna to have to find something to hold it in there while I get the PCB ready. Right, PCB goes on the top, and I think it's the PCB that holds everything together. So I've got one connection to go in there. No, it won't go in. Ah. Right, while applying a large amount of force to hold this all in place, I've got to solder the MOSFET, come on, MOSFET source pin in without shorting it across to the gate, which I have. Come on. Oh, that's getting hot. Yeah, that's kind of held in. Now there's the other pin up in this corner. Ouch, that MOSFET's hot. So now let's press down on the MOSFET 
and solder that pin which is battery positive I think let that go hard well I think that's it all in now of course I haven't got the reversing switch in but I'll work something out for that oh that's not pushed for as far down as I would like it um, that's probably all that load of solder around the drain that's going to have to come back off right that's in I'm now thinking actually that part of the heavy duty switch gear underneath uh, this is not quite pressing down but um, is for when you fully release the trigger it shorts the motor so you get that um, instant braking effect that's obviously not done electronically I think that's just done through switch contacts so I think that might be why there are so many contacts in here so now I've just got to get this reversing switch in with its little springs behind these metal contacts that is kind of separate and out here so it shouldn't be too bad let's give that a try well that wasn't too bad that was just a case of putting the lower one on pushing it in and sliding this halfway down then putting the top one in and that's all gone in actually so I'm going to now slide this cover on which I think also holds the PCB in because there's a bit of play there which I don't like the look of so if I slide this on and all the clips clip on, one of them broke when I was taking it apart, but all the others should be good. Hopefully this will work. And there's the switch, the reversing switch. So I'll just solder the, well I'll put that heatsink back on, I'll just solder the wires uh, back onto the two motor terminals and we'll see if it works. Right, here we go, battery's connected. Um, let's try this out. Now I'm going to have to hold the motor because the um, the thing where it uh, shorts across the motor when it stops is going to make this leap. So I just need to hold this. Well, I'm amazed that went back together. Astonishing. And uh, there it is, with most of the screws back in, but this is working absolutely fine. So you've got the speed control, and then when you pull the trigger to a certain point, the, the large-scale metal contacts clearly uh, short out the speed controller, and it's a, a full metal sort of on switch. So when you're fully on, you're not heating up the MOSFET. That point there, and then the other metal contacts do the uh, the braking when you pull the trigger when you let the trigger right out, and of course you get the big spark when it shorts the motor contact. But uh, yeah, I'm very pleased that I managed to get that back together because that was looking like it was going to be sacrificed in the name of science. And uh, you can hear the discrete steps here, actually. That's getting hot. Yes, those are the discrete steps. And also managed to get the gearbox selector back in. And the reversing switch as well. And the other way. it all works so that's kind of it that's how one of these uh, speed trigger switches works internally it's actually just a whole set of contacts not many five or six a uh, set of resistors five or six resistors some sort of pwm chip i mean it could be as simple as a 555 and a dirty great mosfet that's really all there is to it so that's it cheerio